real vector spaces. Our goal here will be to show that um, certain sets are vector spaces based on uh, ten, the 10 axioms that define a vector space. Here you can see some of the symbols that we uh, will use. Um, we establish the definition for the vector space that let V be some arbitrary non-empty set of, uh, of vectors, uh, some set uh, defined by two operations, vector addition and scalar multiplication such that suppose u, v, and we better say a, a vector w uh, in this capital V set so that uh, u plus v is is defined uh, and we call that vector addition and suppose further that some scalar k <clears throat> is a real number then k times a vector scalar multiplication is also defined uh, within the set if the following 10 axioms hold true for vectors u, v, and w, there's the w, <laughs> um, in uh, this uh, big set uh, uh, u, and for all scalars k and m, and I think the, you, you know, whoever sign may use c and d, doesn't matter about uh, what letters you use. Um, here, uh, these scalars are, are, are real numbers, uh, so then uh, capital U is um, a vector space. Now, of these 10 axioms, the first five are associated with vector addition, so that's why I call them, I will call them A1 to A5. Uh, A1 is the closure property, that, that is when you add two vectors the result, the addition, the sum is also in the set. A2, the uh, good old fashioned associative property from fifth grade and likewise the commutative property A3 standard. A4 is the the additive identity property. That is that if if we have a vector uh, U then we should be able to find a zero such that u plus zero gives us the vector u, and this is for all u um, in the um, in the so-called space. So for a4, if you have that, then you should be able to pick up a5. That is the additive inverse. That is that if we have a vector u, then there does there exist a negative u such that u plus negative u is equal to that zero element that we found up in 4. Now 6 through 10 are in accordance to scalar multiplication. Now a1 and m1 are the, are the keys. a1 is uh, for closure for vector addition and m1 is closure for scalar multiplication. So here uh, for the closure for for the scalar uh, property, um, if u is a vector, k is a scalar, then the multiplication of k times u is that result, um, is that uh, product in uh, the space? If so, then it's said to be closed. Now, now how does that fail? Well, it fails. Say, for example, if the 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 vectors that you're only concerned about are are positive. Uh, vectors. So you add positive vectors, you get a positive vector. So no problem with that. So associative, commutative, all that stuff works. But it will fail with with respect to scalar multiplication because if all I'm dealing with is would be positive vectors, if I take a negative scalar times a positive vector, then that gives me a negative, a negative vector. But that negative vector is said to not be a part of the set of positive vectors. So that particular uh, set of vectors, positive vectors there for that example that I'm just talking about, would not be a vector space. It would not be closed with respect to scalar multiplication. Um, M2 is the uh, M2 and M3 distributive properties. The first is for vectors. Here we distribute the K for M2. We distribute the K on the vectors U and, and V. 
And, and all we're concerned about is equality. Is the left side equal to the right side? Same thing for 8 or M3, distributed property for scalars. We distribute scalars K and M on the vector U. And again, all we're concerned about is does the left side equal the right side? M4, the associated property for scalars, um, old-fashioned associated property. M5, or number 10, the multiplicative identity property. That's, that's a big one. Um, very easy, uh, but we check that. Uh, is 1 times a vector equal to the original vector? We want to make sure that that's the case. Right? Here's the first problem. Um, determine whether the set together with the indicated operations is a vector space. If it's not, then identify one of the ten vector space axioms that fails. I just put the whole problem here, included the answer, and, and all these problems are taken from web assigned. Here the set of two tuple vectors, x, y, such that x is positive or zero and y is negative. Well, you know that's going to fail when you take a scalar Say if a scalar is supposed to be any real number. If it's any real number, then I can take a negative scalar times that vector x, y. Then that's going to force that first component to be negative. But here this set does not allow that. So that's why the set is not a vector space because it is not closed under scalar multiplication. Right? Do you see that? So... I'm just going to walk down through it. Let U, V, and W be vectors. In the given set. And let I use these guys C and D be the scalars, be any real numbers. <coughs> so for A1, so let's say that U is this U sub 1, comma, U sub 2 where we get u sub 1 is positive or 0, right? And let's say v is v sub 1, v sub 2. The same criteria. v sub 1 is positive or equal to 0. So u plus v is u sub 1 plus v sub 1, comma, u sub 2 plus v sub 2. This is closed because the first two components are still positive. Now, it, it only says just to show one, but sometimes you can't get to the one unless you just go right through them, right? So I'm just going to do this for this problem, then for the, for the most of the other ones, I'll just pinpoint the one that, that fails. Sometimes you can see it, you know, sometimes you can't see it, so you have to go through and do all ten. So here for the, uh, the associative property, so we want to see is... And, and here, let me just do the uh, commutative. U plus V, is that the same as V plus U? And, and this one is good. Say yes on that one. Let, let's see. U plus V is u sub 1 plus v sub 1 comma u sub 2 plus v sub 2 
And now that's the same thing as if we flip them around. Since the components themselves are just numbers, we're good. A3 here, uh, we do the associative. Well, let's look at this one first. If we add the U plus the V, we need to look at what, uh, what W looks like. So this is u sub 1 plus v sub 1, comma, u sub 2 plus v sub 2, then plus that w. And then we add them all up. u sub 1 plus v sub 1 plus w sub 1, comma, u sub 2 plus v sub 2 plus w sub 2. Now that's the left side. Well, the right side is the same. So this is u plus, here the emphasis is on v plus w first. Now we add the whole thing. And we get we get all that to to hold that works out. So A four for the, the so called the zero. I just define theta to be the zero. Sometimes it doesn't always look like zero, so I just call it theta. So for each u is u plus theta equal to u. So, so here, u sub 1 comma u sub 2 plus, which is called this theta sub 1, theta sub 2 equal to u sub 1 and u sub 2. Well, that implies that theta sub 1 looks like 0 and theta sub 2 looks like 0. And 0 is allowed for the first component because it, it did say that the first component can be less than or I'm sorry, greater than or equal to 0. So we're good there. A5 for all u does there exist a negative u such that u plus is negative gives us the zero component. So so here we have some u sub 1, u sub 2, plus some u sub 1 hat, comma, u sub 2 hat. Does that give us 0, comma, 0? 
Well, this implies that u sub 1 plus u sub 1 hat is 0 and u sub 2 plus u sub 2 hat is 0 and that implies that the u sub 1 hat is this 0 minus u sub 1 or negative u sub 1 but how can that be when the first component can't be negative right And then also, you get u sub 2 hat is negative u sub 2. So, for each u, the negative u is defined as negative times the first component times the negative times the second component but negative times u sub 1 has to be positive or 0 so that one fails but unfortunately in the selection of the answers that wasn't part of the answer so we keep on moving right so m1 here for the um, this is the closure property for scalar multiplication. So let V be a vector in the given set. And K is the scalar, some any real number. So, k times u, which is k u sub 1 times k u sub 2, fails. Because, let k equal to negative 1. And let u equal to 3 comma 4. Thus, k times u is negative 1 times 3 comma 4, which is negative 3 comma negative 4. But I can't have the, the negative 3. the negative 3 is not allowed for this set thus the set fails to be a vector space since it is not closed with respect to scalar multiplication Okay, let's take this one. Determine whether the, uh, the set together with the indicated operations is a vector space. If it is not, then identify one of the vector space axioms that fails. Now, now I'm going to show you, tell you here that when you have 
uh, vectors or matrices and they give you terms right regular terms but then they have like one if it's a zero that's the key here's what they're saying they're saying that for all two by two matrices that look just like this what does that mean all two by two matrices that have a zero there when you add all those guys when you add those vectors together is the resulting vector a vector with a zero at the entry of a22 yes that's that's the kicker and then so that's for for vector addition or here vector addition would be matrix addition and then if you take a scalar times this vector any scalar times this vector does it change the the structure of this matrix so that it loses its form what form that is does this entry here where that zero is if I multiply by a scalar would that cease from being a zero it will always be zero thus uh, this set of uh, two by two matrices forms a vector space do you see what what this is and we'll get into this in detail with subspaces because subspaces only concerns uh, just two properties and not ten uh, just the vector addition and the scalar multiplication. We just show those two. Pretty cool. Uh, really cool, right? Uh, because in this section, especially with the old book, this new book, sorry, textbook, but the old book, you had to show all ten, man. And you do that for like three or four problems and all these ten axioms are naturally a part of you forever. And you wake up three o'clock in the morning and you're saying, is that the distributed property? No, it's the mailman. But anyway, um, so, <laughs> so, so this is, I'm just going to write it up. Just to show you what, what's happening. Is the set of all matrices of the form a vector space. The answer is yes. When you add matrices of like form, the sum is of the same form. So, so this satisfies A1 to A5. Yeah, pretty cool. With the zero matrix being zero, 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 zero. And Let's let this equal to A. And so the negative of A is negative A, negative B, negative C, zero. And then likewise,
multiplying any scalar times a matrix of the form is still a matrix of the same form. Now, I believe in critical thinking, and I think mathematics pushes us to think critically. To think critically, I think, means are you able to understand what's happening? Can you communicate? Can you express what's happening in words? And is what you say, does that make sense? So, so here, this satisfies M1 to M5, the, the last five of the, of the properties. So, yes. This set is a vector space. <coughs> Determine whether the the set together with the indicated operations of vector space. If it is not, then identify one of the vector uh, space axioms that fails. <coughs> this is the set of all three by three matrices of the form. Here, the key is the form, right? Now, notice the zeros. Good. Because if, if they put a number there besides zero, then it's not going to be a vector space. So here they're saying uh, vectors that look just like this. The vectors that got zeros in those same spots. All of those vect all of those matrices. When you add them, is the result a matrix of the same form? Yes. So that satisfies uh, vector addition or here uh, matrix addition. And and then for the scalar multiplication, if I take a scalar, a number, times, take a number, times this matrix, well, it's just going to give me the same form. What's LeBron James doing? <laughs> KC and the Sunshine Band. K D K E. Kevin Durant K D. Anyway. K F. I don't know what that is. But anyway. The the key is that look, it's still the same form. I still get zero there, zero there, zero there, and I get numbers elsewhere, right? That that's all they're saying. So that's why. That's the case. And that's the only uh, result that you can uh, select for that one. Now, look at this guy. Here, determine, okay, okay, all that blah, blah, blah. Determine whether it's set together with the indicated operations of the vector space. If it is not, then identify one of the vector space axioms that fails. Instead of all 4x4 four four matrices of the form, okay, you see all this stuff. Check this out. I can't use that one. There's a highlighter. Let's use that. That one throws everything off. And it's that one, folks, that will make this, this set of matrices fail from being a vector space. So this is not a vector space. Due to, if I take two matrices of the same form, when I add them together, then that, I'm going to have those last entries, 1 plus 1, I'm going to get 2, right? And then it's going to fail uh, scalar multiplication as well, because when I multiply by a scalar times this matrix, 
the result would be for that entry down there is going to be k times 1 is going to be k and not equal to 1 back over again so so here we say that uh, this uh, this set is not This set of matrices is not a vector space. Because the matrices are not closed with respect to scalar multiplication well vector additions well We just use that one. I mean, that one says it. Um, that's the first one that you run into that uh, that fails. Uh, you take two matrices of the same form, then when you add them, then that last component is going to be two. It's not. It's not going to be one. So that's that's vector addition. So that guy f fails. Okay. Excuse me. Determine whether the set together with the indicated operations of vector space. If it is not determined one of the vector uh, space axioms that fails. We, let's talk about this. The set of all 3x3 three three diagonal matrices with the uh, standard operation. You let A equal to let's say this is A1 0 0 0 A2 0 0 0 A3 and then let B equal to B one zero 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 B two zero 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 B three. Well let's just talk about it first. Is this set a vector space? Do you say yes or no? Well hopefully you say yes. Because you want to argue what are they talking about? What is fundamentally going on? Because once you see that, then everything else is a piece of cake. Everything else is just is just you know, remote kind of just writing stuff out, just making your hand hurt because you, get, you gotta write all this stuff out, right? That's how it was, you, you know, back, especially with the old textbook, because the old textbook reminds most of us who study mathematics with how it was when we were students. And and and, and my textbook from back when I was in school was like it was a nightmare. But anyway, uh, <laughs> really good theoretically, uh, excellent. Uh, but anyway. So what's going on? All they're saying is that if I have three by three diagonal matrices, they have to be of this form, right? That is that when I add them, is that resulting sum a diagonal matrix? You better believe it. So when you add A plus B, then I get A1 plus B1, 0, 0, 0, A2, plus B sub 2, 0, 0, 0, A3 plus B sub 3. Well, the result is still a diagonal matrix, right? A is supposed to be red. Now, if we say that you multiply a scalar times the matrix, does it offset the form of the matrix? No. This is K A1 0 0 0 K A2 0 0 0 K A3. So, so for here vector 
or matrix addition that holds and for scalar multiplication that also holds <coughs> take uh, take one times uh, the matrix A I still get the matrix A so that's that's fine there's a zero matrix just the zero matrix for the three by three the negative would be the zeros, you know, where you have these zeros, and then uh, along the main diagonal, you get negative values. And that's, everything is fine, because it says that you have the standard operations. That, that is, that whatever, what goes um, with respect to uh, numbers, real numbers, also would go with, when you start adding these matrices, the components satisfy just the standard operations of real numbers so you're, you're good there this set is a vector space Excuse me. Now here's the guy. This guy. Now this set is supposed to to be a vector space. The it's supposed to be a vector space because it's a classic problem from like 150 years ago. They've changed that last part where you get the CX. It's supposed to be x times c. They put that negative there to throw us off. So because of the negative, it's not going to be a vector space. Because of that negative, for me, <clears throat> most all of the uh, uh, scalar properties fail. Like the m1, you know, through the m, um, uh, what is it, m5 or m4, whatever. They they failed on me. But in Web Assign, Web Assign said most of them were satisfied. So I'm going to go through and show you what I got. And um, and I, I I do take um, argument against Web Assign. Those blundering. Uh, <laughs> so let's begin. So here, uh, let X, Y, and Z be in the given set. Note that my, my argument and my approach to my argument for every problem is the same. Um, and and I, I notice like, you know, in, in, in other classes, calculus one, two, three, whatever, and I have students, if, if, I, I've worked certain problems in, for my lectures. And then the problems that I may give in web assign, a little, a little bit different, but they work the same. It's the same idea. Use my approach. Now, it, it you may have to, to go and pull up some algebra or some trig or some Cal 1 if it's Cal 2 or Cal 3, but you should be able to. Anyway, I, I'm, critical thinking is the key because, uh, unfortunately, a lot of times uh, people just want to kind of see the same old, same old, okay, show me how to work this problem. Okay, I can work this problem the same way. It looks the same. Basically, I'm not even thinking. And so then you, you change up the problem, force people to think, and then there's, I ain't never seen this problem before. You know, and, and why is he doing this to us? Because we want you to think. Because when you get to those four-year institutions, those engineering schools, and, and those uh, math departments, in physics department, they're going to require chemistry and all of that. They're going to require that you know how to think, N not that you know how to just work a problem the same way that you just saw it worked out. Anybody can do that. I mean, anybody can do that. Okay, I, I didn't mean to get on that. I'm sorry. I, I digress. 
<laughs> okay, so let x, y, and z be, um, and here, these are, these, they're positive real numbers, be in the given set, right? What does that mean? They are positive real numbers. And let, so you're using C, so I use that C and D be any real numbers. So a1 <coughs> x plus y look at how it's defined as x times y so that's the addition it's closed because that's what's given a2 x times y that's equal to xy that's the same for, for commutativity that's the same as y plus x which is y times x there's no argument that the difference is the same a3 for the associative property for addition x plus y emphasis emphasize first plus w well, this is equal to x y and then that's plus w then that's equal to x times y times w so this is the left side For the right side, if x plus, then the emphasis is on y plus w. This is equal to x plus y times w. And then this is just x times y times w. Well, they're the same. That's all we want. Left side equal the right side. A4, we look for the zero. So here, if, if you, then u plus the zero has to equal to, to the, the function or to the, the vector uh, u back over again with here u is x and I need to use that since that's what we're using up above if x then x plus theta is equal to x we don't know so here we have x plus theta that has to be x times theta let's let theta equal to theta sub 1 theta sub 2 but this has to equal to x. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm overthinking. This is a one tuple. <laughs> so let theta equal to. Excuse me. Let theta equal the, we don't know what it looks like, I'm sorry, the zero element. That was false of me to make that claim. Say, I don't know. It, it must be determined by the uh, arithmetic. So here, I get theta is equal to 1. 
So do you see why I call the zero element theta because it doesn't look like zero all the time? So the the additive <coughs> identity is one. Now a five if x then can we find negative x such that x plus its negative is equal to the zero element from 4? So here we have x plus some negative equal to 1 because we got 1 to be the, the zero element. So here we have x times this negative x because that's how you based on the addition that's how you add you multiply is equal to 1 so this implies that negative x is equal to 1 over x splendid so this becomes the negative right this is the 0 okay so good so everything looks good so far. So now we come to M1 for the uh, closure property. Now remember how that was defined. That's that C times X is equal to negative X to the C. So here um, c times x is equal to negative x to the c. N now the, the question here is, is is that guy closed with respect to um, how how these problems are defined? It says that let v be the set of all positive uh, real numbers. But, but this is how it's defined. So we don't argue that. So I'm going to leave that be. Um, it's defined as, as this. We don't know exactly what that, that negative means. I, I, I think if what it means from what it, based on what I think it means, that this negative uh, uh, would uh, make this guy a negative, And here it's saying that you, you cannot have negative values, right? So, um, but just, just based on how it was defined, I'm going to give this uh, closed with respect to scalar multiplication. Now, I'm, I am questioning that. Because let's go back. Let's go back up. So it says that let V be the set of all positive real numbers. So X and Y are positive real numbers. So here C can be negative or positive. It doesn't matter. Uh, <clears throat> now here uh, X is positive. So the result, shouldn't the result also be positive? So putting that negative there would just, to me, throw everything off. Well, obviously, like I said in the beginning, that negative is throwing everything off and making this guy not a vector space. So I'm going to say here that this guy is closed with respect to uh, scalar multiplication. And let's look at, let's look at some of these that, that follow. Um, I, I want to say, I, I think Werbersign says that that, that this is not true but then it says I think some of the others are true um, and so I think that was you know that that was the issue um, l l let me show you in terms of, of of what I had so here let's uh, look at K times X plus Y that has to equal this is the scalar distributed uh, 
uh, on uh, the two vectors is this the same thing as k times x plus k times y so I'm gonna look at the left side and the right side so the, the left side what's in parentheses is x plus y so that becomes oh I, I guess I better use c So this is C times parentheses X times Y. That's the addition. Now for scalar multiplication, it says to negate, and this is X, Y raised to the C, right? And I mean, you can go a little bit further, but this is still negative X to the C times Y to the C. Now, this would be okay if the right side comes out to be the same thing. So c times x plus cy well I, I can't multiply you know as of yet right now until and you probably could I didn't really think about that uh, my argument or my approach is to deal with the scalar multiplications first so this is uh, negative x to the c plus negative y to the c. Now here's what I get. I get this negative times the negative is positive because it says to multiply. So I get x to the c times y to the c. So I say no there. Um, and I want to say I think I think wherever sign said a5 was was no but then it said uh, uh, I'm sorry, it said M1 was no, but then it said M2 was uh, was yes. Well, I, I think if you use the idea of a negative, then M1 fails because it's a negative. But isn't that how the stupid crap was given to us? So, I mean, I mean to me, then you just they're just saying, I mean, just from the get go is is not true, and uh, well, maybe that's the case, but but it's not even closed. Uh, I, I'm saying it's closed because that's how it's given. Um, so let's look at um, M3. So M3 would be the distribution of the of the scalars onto the vector. Is that the same thing as here C times X plus D times X? Let's look at the left side, C plus D to the X. Well, since this is a scalar times X, I look at this as negative times X raised to the C plus D. Then I can use the properties of exponents. This is negative X to the C times X to the D. Now, the, um, the right side is C times X plus d times x so I get negative x to the c plus here I get negative x to the d now the addition says to multiply so you multiply negative times negative you get positive so I get x to the c times x to the d now I say no because this is negative and this guy is positive. Ooh, space ran out. So M four <coughs> M four is the associative property for the scalars. So C times D times X. Is that the same thing as C times parentheses D times the vector? So this is negative X to the C times D. That's the, uh, the left side.
So for the right side, this C times D times X. First we raise the D, so this is C times parentheses negative X to the D -th power. And then now we raise the C, which we have to apply the negative, so that becomes positive. So this is positive X to the D raised to the C -th power. You have a power raised to a power, you multiply the powers. So this is X to the C times D. Again, here negative, right? Nope, and the same thing happened here. Negative, nope, negative, and no. So I get I get M2, M3, and M4 fail. And you could argue that um, that M1 probably fails too because of this this negative right here. But that's that's how it's defined. So I don't want to argue against what they give me. But I I can argue that my left side is not equal to the right side. My left side is not equal to the right side. My left side is not equal to the right side. So, so, so this one fails too. It fails, fails. Man, it looks like my paper when I was a kid and all my classes in the third, fourth, fifth grade. But anyway, um, so much red. And then M5, 1 times X is equal to negative X to the first, which is negative X. But that's not equal to X, right? So this guy fails. Because 1 times X is supposed to just give us X, right? 1 times X should give us X. Supposed to. But it does not because of that negative so this guy fails as well now in web well assigned he does say, he, he claims that this fails He's, he says that that M5 fails and I think he says that M1 fails but he says that M2, M3 and M4 are satisfied I, I argue Definitely that M2, M3, M4, and M5 all fail. And to, to somewhat degree, M1, but since M1 is given, right? They gave us that crap. So I'm just taking on, based on, you know, what the, they, they gave us. That is, is, it is closed with respect to scalar multiplication based on how it was given. That negative, I know that's an issue. And so um, I'm giving you, you know, working this problem the way I see it. I think Web Assign is just totally crap when it comes to this, and, and they definitely didn't get it. Um, so, so when you're going through the homework and you see that, you want to argue with that, just email me, and I give you the points when I look at it, okay? Because uh, now the cool thing is that they have this very same problem, and where of a sign without the negative. They have that very same problem without the negative. And, and all of those axioms are satisfied. And it's, it's a vector space. As a matter of fact, the question here for critical thinking, what is this vector space? What is this? And, and you hear this, you send me an email. If you're in my class, you tell me exactly what this is a set of functions this is a function from algebra this is a class of functions they they work by themselves if you can tell me what this is i'm going to give you extra credit out this world if you can tell me what this is you're going to pass my class all right let's keep on moving boy i'm excited about that right there i'm i'm going to be looking for your emails and and, and for your statements, let me know. Tell me what that is. Send me an email. And, and, and write down what that is and send that to me. And, and if you can get it, this is critical thinking at its best. So anyway, uh, rather than use the standard definitions of addition and scalar multiplication in R3, suppose these two operations are defined as follows. With these uh, new definitions... 
is R3 a uh, vector space? Well, R3 is a vector space, but not the way it's defined here. Um, <laughs> so, <coughs> <coughs> so we look at this problem here. Just checking my pen. Is this a vector space? You got 10 axioms. Now I'm going to tell you right here, and we'll keep on moving, that this set satisfies 9 of the 10. It does not satisfy that last one. M5 fails. That is 1 times x times y times z equals to 0 y z but it that does not equal to x times y times z so m5 fails or we call it number 10 fails All right so this is not a vector space Here, um, so basically, uh, just show whether or not uh, this set is a vector space. Here, we have two vectors that are added, and it, every time you add them, you get zero. <laughs> and then here, uh, the scalar multiplication is fine. So scalar multiplication, that's good. This is where we have the, the issues with uh, with the vector addition. So, notice here that if we have the, the zero, so let the zero vector, I'm just going to claim that it's just the standard uh, zero vector for R3. So, and, and here I'm I'm considering this is uh, a four and I'm gonna call this first one U. So U plus theta is supposed to give us is supposed to give us U you right so let's see what happens so question mark so we have the u plus the zero so this is x of one y sub 1, z sub 1, sorry that my 1's look like commas, <laughs> plus the 0, but based on how the addition is defined, this gives us 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, but it's supposed to give us x sub 1, y sub 1 and z sub 1 so so this set fails um, because we cannot um, it does not satisfy the the additive identity Okay. 
Well, let's see uh, what happens with this one. So let's say let let u equal to x1, y1, and z1, and let v equal to x2, y2, and z2. And for the associative property, we need a third vector. So let's say w is x sub 3, y sub 3, and z sub 3. <coughs> Does this one satisfy or not? <coughs> well, <coughs> probably be on the safe side. Let's just go through the steps and, and let's, let's see if we can show. <coughs> Let uh, these three... Um, <coughs> be vectors in R3. Let C and D be scalars. So for A1, <coughs> we have U plus V based on how it's defined here. So that's going to be x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus 5 comma y sub 1 plus y sub 2 plus 5 z sub 1 plus z sub 2 plus 5. So this is closed. With respect to vector addition, A2, if U plus V, is that the same thing as, as V plus U? And that is, that, that guy works out. So let's move on. <coughs> A3, U plus V in parentheses, then plus W. Is that the same thing as U plus, and then here emphasis on V plus W first? Yes. That's satisfied. <clears throat> now watch this. When you when you add that third vector, you, you're going to get, it's going to be like, um, it'll throw the 5 off. But the key is that the left side is equal to the right side. So, so we're good with that. Now, here's where the work begins. You know, A2 and A3 is just busy writing out stuff. So, okay, we're good with that. Uh, A4, here U plus some zero, does that give us, does that give us U, and what U does it give us? So, here the U is said to be, oh, <coughs> excuse me, the U is X sub 1, Y sub 1, and Z sub 1. Plus, I'm going to call this just theta sub 1, theta sub 2, and theta sub 3. So, the way they say you add is x sub 1 plus theta sub 1 plus a 5, comma, y sub 1 plus theta sub 2 plus 5, comma, 
z sub 1 plus theta sub 3 plus a 5 and that has to equal to the original vector x sub 1 comma y sub 1 comma z sub 1 now we we uh, write all that out and so what we get is x sub 1 plus theta sub 1 plus 5 is equal to x sub 1 y sub 1 plus theta sub 2 plus 5 is equal to y sub 1 and then z sub 1 plus theta sub 3 plus 5 is equal to z sub 1 now that works out to if we subtract the x of 1 on both sides and we solve for the uh, theta sub 1 so we get theta sub 1 is equal to negative 5 theta sub 2 is equal to negative 5 theta sub 3 is equal to negative 5 thus the 0 would be negative 5 negative 5 negative 5 so we're good with that so a5 for all u, does there exist negative u such that u plus negative u gives us that crazy looking zero? Right? So here we have u, which is x sub 1, y sub 1, z sub 1, plus some, some negative. here the the negative I'm just gonna just use symbolic notation x sub 1 hat y sub 1 hat z sub 1 hat and here that has to here for us equal the negative 5 negative 5 negative 5 well, let's see how that works out. So I get x sub 1 plus x sub 1 hat plus 5 is equal to negative 5. And then y sub 1 plus y sub 1 hat plus 5 equals negative 5 and then z sub 1 plus z sub 1 hat plus 5 equals negative 5 okay. well that implies then that this x sub 1 hat which is that negative looks like that guy is negative x sub 1 minus 10 y sub 1 hat has the same form negative y sub 1 minus 10 and then z sub 1 hat is 
negative z sub 1 minus 10. So for for u, negative u is negative x sub 1 minus 10 comma negative y sub 1 minus 10 comma negative z sub 1 minus 10. Isn't that a daisy? So when we take the vector u plus this guy then uh, we end up with uh, the zero which the zero is that neg defined as negative 5, negative 5, negative 5. Hmm. Interesting. So 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 those were all okay. Let's see if I can I need another another page. Oh, it threw the page up here. That's fine. Okay, so... So we have the... Now the... The M1... We show the closure there, so uh, u plus v, this is x sub 1 plus y sub 1 plus 5, comma, x sub 2 plus y sub 2 plus 5, I'm sorry, I need to show scalar multiplication. I'm all thrown off because all my settings are all thrown off because of this stupid computer. Um, so let C be a scalar. And u be the vector x sub 1, y sub 1, and z sub 1. So, c times u. And I want to say, I think they define in this other page, it's like down at the bottom of this. So, uh... Crap that ticks me off. I mean, why is it just the simplest thing? If you want to add a page at the end, you just hit the dang on button to add the page, and the page is at the end after the page that you were on, not in the very stupid beginning, right? But anyway, okay, um, scalar multiplication is defined in the regular way so it's all we needed for that <coughs> So let C be the scalar and U is that. So uh, C times U is just the standard
so that one's good so now M2 we want to, to see if C times here two vectors U plus V is that equal to C times U plus C times V <coughs> so we have C times here these two vectors when we add them if you recall I think it was like well the, the U is the XYZ so this was X sub 1 plus Y sub 1 plus 5 comma X sub 2 plus Y sub 2 plus 5 so that gives us C times X sub 1 plus C times Y sub 1 plus 5C comma C times X sub 2 plus C times Y sub 2 plus 5C now we look at that's the left side look at the right side CU plus CV so we gotta do the scalar multiplication first so this is C X sub 1 comma C Y sub 1 comma C Was there, a, was there a third component? I'll tell you, man, having this page all messed up, boy, that was throwing me for a loop. And, jeesh. That's not it. There is the third guy. Yeah, so. It's the third component over there. Uh, you know, I'm thinking just not even do this problem since it messed up on me. And come back and just add it later right but you know I'm, I'm here and it's taking me forever to to do this crazy section damn vector spaces right so that one was good excuse me I didn't mean to curse but I'm getting ticked off um I don't have the stupid problem right here in front of me um, so here this is uh, we were checking C times U plus V is that the same thing as C times U plus C times V and I want to make sure that I had the, the U plus V uh, down here right I think this is X sub 1 plus Y sub 1 plus 5. This is X sub 2. It just doesn't seem right. Okay, I'm just going to stop and then just come back and just add another little quick video and put the whole problem together because everything is just out of place and and this is just getting to me.